Hey friends, today I'm going to show you step by step how to draw a flamingo. Uh, this goes along with those Cincinnati uh, free zoo safaris that they have been doing at the, uh, the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens. They've been doing Facebook live videos every day. My girls and I have been enjoying them and this week they did a uh, little instructional class on their flamingos and it was a lot of fun to watch so that's why we're going to draw pink flamingos today if you didn't get to catch it you can go back and watch it at any time they keep all of those videos on their news feed so it's fun that if you miss it you can go back and watch it so I'm gonna teach you how to draw a pink flamingo and I'm gonna be drawing sideways here so hopefully it won't be crooked so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start by drawing kind of like a number two Okay, so it's gonna look like a number two with a curvy bottom. So if I'm going too fast, remember to just pause the video and catch up. And remember that you probably will want to draw with pencil first, then trace over it with a marker to give it that kind of cartoon look with the black edging, which we see in a lot of cartoons, kind of the outlining look. Um, but I'm gonna draw straight with black marker so you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by doing a number two with a really curvy bottom, okay? See how it kinda looks like the number two with a curvy bottom? Now what you're gonna do, this is gonna be the head, that's gonna be the neck, and that's gonna be the start of the flamingo's back. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring it in just a little bit and out just a little bit, kinda like a Pac-Man mouth, okay? Because their beaks kinda inset a little bit on their face, and then you're gonna bring this in to kinda go in up underneath its chin or up underneath its neck. Now we're gonna bring the beak down and we're gonna do it right here where this Pac-Man mouth is. We're gonna come down and back up just like that, okay? Then we're gonna draw a line straight down the middle where the flamingo can open its beak. Now the flamingo has a black tip at the end of its beak so we're gonna go kind of up and down kind of like an upside down V, and then when you start coloring this, you can color that in black, okay? Now we're gonna go back and start the neck. We're gonna continue right here, and we're gonna go down, 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 and around, okay? That's gonna be its long neck. Now we're gonna start its tail feather, so I'm gonna come back over here to where I had drawn the end of my number two, and I'm going to curve down, mount, and up to start the tail feathers, or to the, it's wing feathers actually, I think is what this is. And then up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up. And up one more time all the way to the top. Okay, now we're going to take the neck, curve around, let it attach to its belly here, and then connect back in to the bird. All right, now we're going to draw its legs. So we're gonna start by drawing like the little cluster of feathers that kind of come down at the top of its leg. And we're gonna go out, out, and a flamingo's legs bend backwards than what we would think normally. They, they bend the opposite way as what our legs bend. So we're gonna make it curve this way so you can tell that it crooks the opposite way, okay? Then we're gonna come down with the other leg. We're just gonna make the other leg straight, like it has one straight and one crooked, okay? Then, we need an eye, don't we? We never went back and did an eye. So right here, right about where the beak is, I'm gonna draw a circle. I can make it a little fancy by making it come out, make a little black marking around its eye. Kinda like a cat eye mascara there on the flamingo. Then we're gonna go a black spot. Maybe it's looking up a little bit. And give it a little white dot in its eye, like a little light reflection. Color the rest in black. 
All right. Now we've talked about the importance of a background in our pictures. So I want to show where my flamingo is. Now we have built foregrounds, middle grounds, backgrounds where we can have depth in our picture. I'm not gonna put too much details in this one because I want my flamingo just to be standing in the water. So I'm gonna do water behind where it's obvious that the flamingo is standing in the water. And then I'm gonna draw the sun in the sky Maybe a few birds flying way back in the background just to add a little bit of depth. So they kind of look like the letter M in the sky. Okay, now when you color this, a flamingo is what color? A flamingo is pink, right? So when I colored this, I colored the wing and the legs a dark pink to add a little contrast. And if you look at a flamingo, their legs are very bright, hot pink. And they sometimes have some bright pink, hot feathers in them. So I made the wing and the legs hot pink. I made the body of my flamingo a lighter pink just to have contrast from the legs and the wing. And remember, contrast is a difference in your picture, so it will stand out. And then on its beak, I, when I was looking at pictures of flamingos, some flamingos had white beaks, some flamingos had a yellowish orange beak, and some flamingos had a solid pink beak. I know that what they eat uh, and the waters that they eat from is what causes their feathers to turn pink, so I think their beaks can turn pink too. So when uh, I colored it, I put a little bit of yellow, blended in with some pink, to kind of give both of those looks so you can kind of see which one you like better or maybe you might want to blend it like I did. And then I made my picture a sunset just so I have the contrast between the orange and the blue because remember those are complementary colors so they stand out really well against each other and create a nice contrast in your picture. So I made a sunset picture with blue water but would you look just as pretty if you used a dark blue water and a light blue sky with maybe some clouds. So I hope you draw this. If you have time, we would love to see your pictures. You can send them to me or you can post it on the grade level Facebook pages or on the school Facebook page. And I hope you are staying well and staying, uh, having a good time at home. And I hope you're taking some time to draw from time to time. I miss you guys. Bye.